one of those meetings um, was for my, my agent. We, me and her vibe instantly. When we got into the conversation, she asked me, what's the most important thing for you when it comes to work? And I said, ethics. You know, I said, if, if I say I'm going to do something, I'll do it. If you say I'm going to do that, we stick. We don't mess people around. We don't, we don't do that. That's just the way we do it. And she goes, this is how I like to do business. And that was it. And Babette has just believed in me from the beginning. Yeah. And, um, you know, and she had no idea that you were totally lying to her the whole time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> especially out in Southeast Asia. Management and agencies are just, they're not what you want them to be. They don't, they don't feel as though they yeah. work for you. It's, and so- Especially then, definitely then. I, I mean, I think it's getting better in some regards now, um, but back then, shoot man, because I was signed with an agency for a year and a half and they did nothing. They, they took jobs from me to give to other people. Well, that was the thing that, that bothered me is that yeah. you, you'd, you'd hear, you know, because it's a small place, the industry, and you, a lot of people small. talk. And, um, and it was kind of the idea that, uh, you know, someone would approach me and, oh, I, I wanted you for this job, but, you know, they said that I had to take these people. Or, you know, basically, it's like you're, you know, it's like I am host A, and instead of negotiating my job, they go, I'll tell you what, I'll give you host A for half the price if you agree to take B, C, and D for other jobs. And so you wait, hang on, you used me as a negotiation to get me less money so you as an agency could make more money. That's not what we're supposed to do here. You're supposed to work for me, for my jobs, and give me priority on this, give them priority on their jobs. And that's like, that's, hang on a second, I'm not a negotiating tool for you to then exploit and make less money. So I kind of realized that honestly, I was paying 25% of my, my income for people to do literally just schedule. Fuck you over. I wasn't, I yeah. wasn't, I was at the point of my, my, my career right at the beginning where I'd kind of blown up quite quickly, quite big. I'd gone from one project to three projects to four projects. And I'm like, suddenly I'm on a bunch of networks. So people just found me. So all I ended up doing was creating ollipettigrew.com and creating an email address. And that is how I found 99% of my work for the rest of the time I worked in Asia. People would just email me directly and I'd be yeah. in like, on my phone, I'd go, yeah, I can do that job. Okay, so I got a question then because you're actually one of the only friends of mine as well as entertainers that we know who has successfully transitioned from a uh, Southeast Asian entertainment market to an American Western market. Is it different? So let's start with management. We're talking about agencies and management. Does it feel different in California, Arizona, Los Angeles, or does it feel exactly the same? No, it's, it's completely night and day. Um, I, when I was in Asia, I wouldn't let, uh, once we got started with the collective and it was sort of rolling, I would never let anybody else handle my my stuff. I negotiate for me. I you know I dealt with everything. I had control. Um, but America is completely different. In Asia, I kicked down doors and just said, "Hey, I want to be on television." Yeah. In America, you cannot even walk through that door unless someone they know has already told them that you are legit. Oh yeah, so, at, at least several people. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. So this woman, like, she set me up. I turn up in LA. Uh, I've got nowhere to stay. I stay with this random guy called Justin Wilman, who ends up, you know, he's blown up now. And then um, while I was there, I had meetings every day. One of those meetings um, was for my, my agent, um, where I just walked in and she, we, me and her vibe instantly. She says, I saw your reel. I've never seen anything like it. Um, I'd love to sign you. And then when we got into the conversation, she asked me, what's the most important thing for you when it comes to work? And I said, ethics. You know, I said, if, if I say I'm going to do something, I'll do it. If you say I'm going to do that, we stick. We don't mess people around. We don't, we don't do that. That's just the way we do it. And she goes, this is how I like to do business. And that was it. And Babette has just believed in me from the beginning. Yeah. And, um, you know, and she had no idea that you were totally lying to her the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just you thinking the her. worst person. Yeah, you just <laughs> lied right in her face. In, in Asia, you can do it by yourself. In America, you honestly can't. I mean, you and uh, a, a couple other people helped open the door up for Alan and I. And then mm -hmm. coronavirus closed the door like really hard, like the, right on our faces. Just as you were, <laughs> did you guys bring coronavirus to America? Because the timing I, of it I don't is know. incredible. Yeah, we're not sure. We're not sure. It's a, we it's a been... mild concern. I was feeling really good in February. Like I was. He I was. was I, can, yeah. I was feeling the flow. I was like, Alan, get your ass down here. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. This is happening. Alan's like, yes, not a problem. I'm going to sign a lease in my apartment. 
let's go. And then, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Yeah. So tough, man. So tough. Yeah, At least now when we make our own content from our, our our apartments, it's the same quality level as like the big network shows. There's oh. no difference. <laughs> dare, dare That's I 100% say, the truth. It's, it's, this might be a bit out. higher. You're not wrong, though. And the, th the interesting thing to think about is, is how is coronavirus going to change the way television is made? Because you got, like I said, right this minute is a pretty unique sort of when it comes to national TV and stuff like that, we are the little engine that could. This show was born out of the last recession as a way of doing television, but more streamlined, you know, just cheaper. People are going to see that the way right this minute is made is probably the way that television is going to need to be made in a way. Yeah. And I think, you know, whether that's good or bad, I don't know. But especially at a time like this, the coronavirus, yeah. Name another show that you, our show has not really changed. We've got the animated background. We do it through Zoom, just like you guys do. But it's still me and the guys having our conversations and showing the videos. And the videos are what pull people in and the comments mm. and why people come back. They like us. Like our show well, still feels 95% the same. And yeah. you watch others and it's like, oh, it's weird like this. They're in their front room. Like you're saying, it's weird to watch the, the evening guys doing their jokes. I guess like the difference as well about Asia and America was the money. That's why. Oh, uh, like, yeah. Because What's like, money in America like? Well, I, like I said, you don't have to tell numbers, but this for, more, for me was very, very telling. That the very first raise I got in America um, as a pat on the back for, you do a good job, we like you, we want you to stay. That raise was more than I ever got paid to do a season of television in Asia. Question, what's a raise? Raise, yeah, what is that? It's There's another thing, there you go. What would your advice be for somebody that's coming up as an actor or TV host in the entertainment industry in say Singapore or Southeast Asia versus LA? I'd say if you're starting off in Southeast Asia or Asia in general, um, and I've only have Hong Kong and Singapore as my references, right? Uh, Justin, you have Bangkok. Um, I, I think you gotta go out and meet people and you go, gotta go out and literally find advocates one by one, convince someone that you're not only going to be something that's valuable in their career in the future, but something that they want to watch or they want to see. And it's person to person, you win someone over. And eventually you'll have won the right person over that you never knew might just come along and be like, hey, someone else I know is auditioning for something. Um, I told them that you might do it because I thought you were pretty awesome when I met you. And I think that is that's at least what I learned from Ollie, actually. I think that was mm, the first couple of lessons sure. that, that Ollie and the collective passed along to me. And you know what? It, it worked. It's tiring and you're on all the time, but it does work. And now I know oh. it's different in LA, but actually well, yes, I've never been successful. I would think yeah. that as far as that goes, I think that, to be honest, is just as important in Los Angeles. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it really, because the only way to get your opportunity, you can get opportunities in Southeast Asia without really networking. You may not necessarily seal the deal in a lot of them, but you can at least possibly get the opportunity because you know, you're, you're pretty or, or you're just good. Um, you can maybe get that opportunity because it's a little bit smaller. In LA, you're not getting an opportunity unless you know somebody. Mm -hmm. Regardless I, I, of how good, you could be the best, the best. If you don't know anybody, nobody fucking cares. That's, and that's a, my issue is uh, at the moment is because we are the only show, national show that doesn't produce in, uh, in California or New York. We're, we're mm. based in Phoenix, which is great because I'm removed from all the bullshit. I could literally just, I, you know, until the <laughs> shutdown, I'd get in my truck, I'd drive six miles to the studio, I'd go and do my television show, I'd get back in the truck, I'd go home. It's nice, relaxing, hang out with my kids. But, um, but I'm removed from, from the LA of it all. So honestly, my, my connections are, are pretty, pretty meager yeah. uh, compared to the way it was, like, like say in Asia, whereas in Asia, like I told you guys, like my, I got my first big job because I drunkenly dared the, the managing director of, uh, of AXN to put me on television. I was like, you should give me that show and I'll make it better. So I just dared him about this show, give it to me. And that was Sony style. 